Today I'm drinking a whole bunch of eggnog and making window sills. Let's go. This house that I'm working on today here has uh, bare window sills. Uh, there's no trim whatsoever. It's just drywall. And we're gonna be switching that out today, put some nice new window sills in. I'm gonna show you just how easy it is. Now, if you did happen to have a whole bunch of trim all around your window, including a window sill, and you just wanted to change it out, it's super easy. Just grab a crowbar and rip them things right out the wall. Uh, it's gonna seem a bit aggressive, but just tear them to shreds. And uh, when it comes to being level, yeah, sure, new homes uh, want the flattest surface in the world, and you can certainly use a level to make sure you get as you know best results as you can but uh you know it's not always going to be that easy especially not on these older homes that have curved uh wall ends or you know the actual entire surface is at a certain degree of angle but that's when we're going to use something called aprons and i'll show you that a little later on now for a brief trip down history lane the eggnog drink as seen presently uh, dates back to, I think the 1600s is what my research told me. Um, it's from Britain and it was called Passat or Passat or Passat. I don't know if that's what they named the little Volkswagen off of. It's a Volkswagen eggnog. Um, <coughs> and it is back in the day they used to, uh, use what was literally referred to as a creamy, frothy milk mixture enhanced with wine or other spirits um that sounds disgusting um and quite frankly if i'm being attacked in the 1600s because i think britain was always in some kind of situation um i'm not too worried about nog uh, i'll just give me the wine you know <laughs> just give me the wine or oh you know friars friars were always messing around with bees maybe they had honey Maybe they can make some honey, honey mead in some creamy, frothy milk mixture. That wouldn't be too bad. Hey, Copper. Now, uh, you will need some very basic supplies for this job, including wood, obviously, and trim. There is the trim. Here is some extra wood, because we're actually replacing everything in this house, every window sill in this house. Um, the wood is actually kind of interesting. If you go to Home Depot, like a pro tip for you, and you find the wood, you're only gonna want one inch wood for a windowsill. Find the best pine you can get and have them cut it to size, but you always wanna leave a couple extra inches here and there. And I'll show you how to do the measurement very shortly. A couple extra supplies you're gonna need. Some kind of ruler. I use this. Um, these are pretty common. They can slide back and forth, which is great for wood. They also have a built-in level, a pencil, invaluable. This tool is interesting. It can help you find certain angles. Now I don't, personally use this but i will show you how paint you know ten dollar little kit from walmart i buy those like indefinitely because i'm not washing paint brushes every time i get done with it just don't got time for it and some paint we did white paint and last but not least you're always going to need to top off your nog now unfortunately you're going to need some power tools for this type of job um there's only three that you particularly need some kind of chop saw and those are just primarily to make sure you make a nice clean cut as you can see i've been cutting some trim in there or as we call them aprons in this particular project um a jigsaw a jigsaw copper come on now get out my nog get out my nog uh you need a, you're gonna need a jigsaw it's definitely necessary and uh even though you could always use you know any kind of hand sander or anything like that like i got one right here but you know a nice Whoa. orbital sander Whoa. is always awesome so Whoa. Let's get to it. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is measure the distance of the window. So, uh, we got roughly 35 inches, which is, you know, the same as the rest of the house. So I already know that I've measured it a couple times and the window sill themselves are a little over four inches. Uh, now I use one by six inch boards. Uh, so in theory, it would stick out a couple inches, but like I said, we're gonna have an apron going underneath it. So it will all make sense. But that 35 inches is really important because we're gonna be adding three additional in inches to it because each board is gonna stick out about an inch and a half. Right there and right there. And it'll make sense shortly. All right, so I've got my board. Got a, 
from that stack right there. You're gonna wanna pick the best side because that's what's gonna be facing up and you most likely will be painting this board. Copper, I swear. And you too. <laughs> they both have their eye on my nog and it's really stressing me out. Okay, so um, I don't really like that side. There's a bunch of knots. Those seem like problematic. We'll go with this side. So as we stated, the window was 35 inches. We'll start from this side, measure out 35 inches. Okay. But remember we want to add three inches. So we're going to take it off right here at 38 inches. And I like to make a little V shape, right? Right there at 38 inches. So that way I know that's got my extra three inches plus the 35 inches of the room itself, mm -hmm. of the wall itself. Damn, this is hard to do with one hand. Line it up just right. I'm just gonna make this line real quick. Let's see if I can do it while holding this thing. I'm done with this. All right, now we got a line. Right through my little, my arrow, that's where we're gonna cut it. Now you can obviously do this with a circular saw of some sort or a jigsaw or whatever, but um, I, I tell you, uh, a nice chop saw for the best straight lines is a lifesaver. So line it up, get the line right where you want it, give it a shine, put it over a little bit, not good. I like it. And we chop. Now, when I was saying earlier about how important those pencils are, they are very important. You should always buy more than one because I am now looking everywhere for this stupid little pencil. And I'm sure anyone that's done building has done this before. And you need, oh, there's my pencil. All right, here we go. Time for the next step. Now, as you see, we have this piece of wood. We have our windowsill. But if you try to fit it in there, it don't quite fit on both sides, which is exactly what you want when you're building a window. So you want a little bit of a, I don't know what you would call them, a nugget sticking out possibly. But I saw this little trick on how to line up exactly how you want to do it. So you wedge it in on each side. And now we know where the wall hits right here. And yeah, it's all mangled up, I'm cutting. But I know that's where my point is on that side. I'm gonna flip it over, do the same thing. Let's see if I can get a better angle. I know it's so really bright, but right there. Perfect. Make our lines going across from each location. Doesn't really matter. You can make the longest line you want. Oh, the pencil didn't work. <laughs> I might need to sharpen my pencil. Why must y'all be here for every part of this? I love you, I promise. There's a lot of toys in this house. You have every toy known to mankind. Okay, there we go. So now we have a line. So that is the point that will stick out from the windowsill. And we're eventually gonna be cutting a line straight down there. We'll do the same thing with the other side. Line up your square. Nice and in there. Sorry, I gotta use my foot. I have a newfound respect for people who film themselves building online. Okay. Nice. Now, if you'll remember, uh, the window itself was 35 inches, yet we cut the board at 38 inches, which means we have three extra inches somewhere along the line. That puts us with an inch and a half extra on the left and an inch and a half extra on the right. And now we're gonna cut those lines. So I've drawn out the lines. That's an inch and a half in from the left. This is the line we scribed from the windowsill. And I always put an X where I'm cutting. Uh, I cannot tell you how many times I've cut the wrong side of things. And it's devastating. X means destroy. And I did the same thing on that side. Destroy all this area. Now, I know earlier I showed you, I would teach you how to use this tool. Um, this is for finding certain angles and scribing them into wood. And 
the way you would do it is, I don't know if you can see this window, this wall is not 90 degrees from that. It's coming out towards me, you know, that direction. And so what you do is keep that black end flat against the wall while meanwhile pinning this and that's your angle, which actually looks pretty good. But uh, sometimes it could be an angle like that or an obtuse angle, who knows? You know, but it's for scribing along wood. In this particular case, I'm not gonna use Now we have our wood that's all scribed up. Those are the lines we wanna cut. As you can see, I've drawn them out. Here's a couple other of the apron pieces that we'll be using later. The reason why they're laying here is I was painting them because even though they come white, you can buy them pre-painted, you still have to cut them. And you're gonna want the ends to be white. So I went ahead and painted them up so they're ready for later. And for practical purposes, I'm not gonna show you me jigsawing, but I'm about to cut out those lines. I'll show you when I get back. And there we have our piece. Now you notice like the lines weren't necessarily perfect. That's okay. We use caulk to fill in the gaps. Let's see if this thing fits. It does. Now what's most important is that it goes right up to this jam right here. And for the most part it does. Uh, yeah, we could shave it down a little bit here and there. And you'll notice these gaps and stuff like that. They'll be around and uh, Really, I mean, I'm sure I could have measured it way more precise and it would have taken 10 times the amount of time, but you're gonna be caulking this thing anyways. So now what we're gonna do is take this out, sand out these edges and put it in place. Hey Jack, you enjoying the sun? For practical purposes, that's your new windowsill. Uh, of course it needs to be caulked, painted, yada, 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 stuck in place with some nails. But we're going to go on to one that I started yesterday so I can show you how to do the apron. And here's one that I did yesterday that's more or less finished. Um, obviously it needs one more touch of paint. Uh, the caulking, it, the wall itself needs to be repainted. Um, I didn't do that. I did do that. Um, I also didn't do that. But, you know, for the most part, the windowsill looks fine. Just besides, you know, touching up paint. When you punch it in, you're gonna to wanna to punch a couple nails here and there and make it as flat as you can. Um, but you're gonna to have to recock those anyways. So even if you pre-paint them, you're gonna be painting them again. But right up under here, that's what I'm about to show you. So I cut this thing, it's called the apron. And you can buy these as is, kinda. Of. And you just cut them to size. And you don't want them to go the entire length with the nuggets. You want them to go to the window size. So line them up with the window right there, right there, and punch them on in. I already punched the one apron in, but I wanted to show you this. So you see that gap, you see, in between where the new window sill is? That's it being level, but the wall itself not. And that is the reason we use aprons. To go right up to it, Cover up any imperfections that may exist, as well as adding stability to the windowsill itself. And just like that, you got it all lined up. You don't see any gap. Now, when you do punch the nails in, you know, not everyone's got an air compressor and a nail gun. So I just use the smallest finishing nails possible. Throw a little cock over them bad boys. Give it its final touch of paint. And you are now. Before I go throw up from the massive amount of milk that I just drank. Remember that challenge that kids do? Like, can you drink this gallon of milk? I think I just did that. Uh, I'm 35. I should have known better. Um, especially not when you add eggs into it. That's a whole nother thing. Um, but I hope you learned something. And next time before you call the man, come see me. Have a good one.